everyone. I'm gonna make some pike laws out of these teaspoons, these knives, and these dessert spoons. I got these at the boot fair, 10p each. It's gonna take me probably an hour to make half a dozen lures, and I'm reminiscing from when me and my cousin, when we were kids, used to nick all the teaspoons out of my auntie's drawer. We used to bend these off like that, and then we'd smack a hole in there with a nail, and then put these down on a wire trace, attached with two swan shot, and used to make fantastic spinners. We used to catch loads of jack pipe on it. So uh, I can't believe I haven't done it since, and it was probably 25, 30 years ago. So I'm gonna show you how I make them, and we'll see how we get on. <laughs> Hope you'll catch something. Right, let's get started. Let's start off with the knife. Then we're gonna need a spoon. And last not but not least, a teaspoon. Right, we're gonna start off with these ones. These have got a slight, quite thick head. I'm gonna try and leave that bit there to uh, drill a hole in for the split ring. I'm gonna experiment a bit. I might, I'll just cut that one, but I might end up having to curve it totally. And uh, on this one, on the knives, I'm gonna cut that there. And then I think this is just gonna be like a Toby lure. I might try and, I might just leave it as it is. Just drill a hole in that and see how it goes. I bet you catch on it, guaranteed. Right, let's get the safety goggles on. Right, I'm going to cut that one with a bit of a head on it, and then the other one, that style, I'm going to cut to make it totally round there. Thing. I think what I could do with that. Right, that one's a bit smoother, so I'm gonna round that off and then just drill two holes in it. That will do. Then teaspoons, little small one. Oh look, there's another little Toby lure there. Quite a lightweight one. Might even have that just as a little tiny spoon. I think that'd look cool. Little perch lure. That'd be good. You don't see many Toby lures that small. Resist. Right now, I'm going to put it in the uh, bench grinder. Goggles in, all your safety stuff. Um, let's have a go. Let's start with this little one first. We're going to just try and smooth this edge off. bit concerned about the angle that the uh, neck comes off so I'm gonna get that in the vise just try and straighten that up so it comes flush with this because I think it'll affect how it pulls through the water oh. 
quite a tough bit of metal that is. Leverage, that's what we need, more leverage. thing sorry how's about that I think that will travel a lot truer right I was gonna make this little one as well I think this will be a really good little perch for a bit light but I think it would be really good I think this knife one really, I oh, don't try not to focus it. I think this knife one's really good, but the shape of it, I think I need to bring a bit of a curve in under here just to balance it out a little bit. Maybe take the end off this. So there we have two drilled out little perch spoons. Quite pleased with them. Holes, drilling holes in metals. All the engineers out there will be laughing their heads off at me. I struggle drilling holes in metal. Right, all I've got to do now is uh, get some split rings. I'm going to go on the internet tonight, order some split rings, and put some hooks on that. I I don't really like spinning with single hooks. I think I'll get like some ten trebles on there, some other ones, and I'll try and drill these out. Oh, rubbish of drilling in metal. I'm surprised this stainless steel is bloody hard, really hard. So um, yeah, come back another day. So I've got my split rings as well. Let's put these together, see what we can make. Another thing come in the post for making my lures. Never just as simple. Some really pucker drill brits. I'm gonna set off on having another go at this. I was gonna say it's a bad boy. It's a very bad boy. Stainless steel. This uh, good idea I've had. It's turned out to be a lot harder than I thought. <laughs> We used to smash them out with a nail piece of piece of piss. Anyway, give it a go. Okay, here's the uh, reward for a few hours toil. No, not a few hours. I've got the split rings and got them on. These are really nice looking spinners. Lovely. Got some semi barbless trebles on them. Um, this big one, I do like the look of this one, but uh, it's a thick old bit of metal. And I'm not going to try and get a split ring over that until I've got the proper pliers. It's a bit scary doing split rings. Um, barbed hooks, so these are particularly strong split rings. Something if you're having a go, try and pay particular attention to how close that hole is to the edge. Because you've obviously got to get the split ring through there. Like this little one, I know it's only a thin bit of metal. But where I had the hole a bit too far out, has just forced the split ring open. Meant I put a different type of swivel on it. But yeah, I can't wait to go and have a go. I really think I'm going to catch something with this. This one might be a bit too light. Have to have a very slow retrieve on it. But yeah, I think they look wicked. <laughs> can't wait. Right, let's get down the river and give them a go. Woohoo! All right, I've made it down to my favorite pipe venue to give these, these spoons a little bit of a go and see what they're like in the water. I've had a few chucks with this little one. It's, uh, it catches the wind, but it works lovely. It really, really does. Haven't caught one, unfortunately. It is, uh, we've had about an inch of rain in the last couple of hours and the river's chocolate tea. So I'm not optimistic about catching one. But yeah, she's done. I cast probably 20 yards into the wind. Okay. 
nice thing with the bat spoon, they can work on their own. You know, you let them go and they flutter and fall. They sort of work backwards sometimes. It's quite strange. giving these new lures a go, my teaspoon lures, and Oliver has been doing a bit of net fishing because he loves catching little fry, and I think I've caught this, I've never caught one of these before, pretty certain that is a stone loach, so I'm really pleased about that, apparently he's caught two, leave a comment below just uh, if there's anything else, I can't think there's anything else, great, let's put him back. Right, we didn't get anything at all, it was a total blank apart from Oliver's two stone loach, so I had to wait a few weeks for another opportunity to have a go. Right, here we are, this is where it all began. This, oh shit, this is where it all ends. <laughs> First cast. Anyway, many moons ago, this used to be an old mill. There was a dam across there. And the water used to come round the back there, come over. Uh, my father and uncle brought up in that farmhouse over there. And this used to be a big mill and a serious bit of water. Apparently, my uncle and my dad told me they caught a 36 pounder out of here 40 years ago. I'm not sure I believe them, to be honest. <laughs> but anyway, this is where me and my cousin used to come down with these spoons and try and catch some pike. So we're going to have a go. Get a pike on this one. It's got a lovely action. There she is, glittering in the sun. I'll tell you what, we've been really lucky this, I uh, can't really see, this winter. Um, it hasn't flooded much. I know the river's low and clear, but I'll tell you what, it's easier to fish low and clear than in the fields. It really is. You'll have to excuse that annoying noise. It's the gears on my reel. They're shot. <laughs> I need to fix them. Oh, oh, we got one. Yes. Woohoo. <laughs> you see that bad boy? Look at that. Oh, you can't beat pike fishing. It's great fun. <laughs> that is fantastic. Right, let's get him, chin him out. I've got to get my backpack off. I wasn't ready for that. <laughs> Brilliant. That is so satisfying. I tell you what, I might even be able to just unhook him in the water. Leave him down there. Oh, wrong bit. And my big bad boy. Right, let's try and get him out. I can't. Oh, there you go, come off, even better. Didn't have to worry about that. That's a good result. Must have been hooked on the barb, this one. I was a little bit hesitant. I uh, I don't know whether you can all see, but you see that cut. I um, chinned a pike the other day and um, he swam ar swung around and uh, I somehow managed to cut myself on his um, tooth. He had one tooth, about that big it was. It was only a pike about uh, seven pounds and he flipping cut me really bad. I was bleeding all over the place. It was either that or I caught myself on the hook. But uh, I can't imagine, I can't imagine I, uh, the hook would have stuck in. So yeah, that little spinner, the spoon, does it again. <laughs> That's satisfying, that is. That is. Glad I didn't have to bring him up on the bank as well. Let's see if there's another one in there. If you guys made any fishing lures or floats, leave a comment down below. Show us some pictures or something. I'd love to see what you can make.
Right guys, that's the end of the video. I really enjoyed catching that pike and uh, just shows you can make anything to catch a pike. I know there's all jigs and stuff these days, but uh, the old spoons, they're good old things and it's nice to reminisce from back when I was a kid. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, uh, click the subscribe button down there and I'd like to take this opportunity to thank John Bond for subscribing and if you're enjoying the content, there'll be more videos up there. Thanks for watching. See you next time.